Today we're going to be continuing on with our signal timing uh, talk and uh, moving into the section of traffic signals in general. Uh, today we're going to be looking at saturation flow rates, uh, loss time uh, for startup, effective times, effective green times and red times uh, that we use for our analyses, and then what's the, finally the capacity of a certain movement, a certain phase at a traffic signal. Saturation flow rate, we've talked about this a couple times earlier in class, and we've, we've discussed a little bit uh, through there. What our saturation flow rate, that's the maximum number of vehicles that could come through an intersection in an hour, uh, particularly in a single lane or in a group of lanes. And so if you've got a single through lane, we'd say the saturation flow rate for that lane is X. And if you've got two through lanes, we typically we'd look at what's the saturation flow rate if both of those lanes were at capacity and moving through at the shortest possible time in between the shortest headway that the cars can get through. Um, because those are often, you know, we normally would time those lanes together. We almost always will. And so like phase two, which may be your southbound through, you know, whether it's a single lane or a double lane, we would look at what's the capacity of those lanes as a whole. Or if it's three lanes, we'd look at what's the capacity during an hour of all three lanes through there. That would be our saturation flow rate, which is just an estimate of what's the maximum number of vehicles that could get through in a single movement. I like that. And so that's that's our saturation flow rate. And that assumes that we are have a constant uh, green light all the way over for an entire hour. So we have 3,600 seconds of green time all the way through. Now, obviously, that's never going to happen or it should never happen in a traffic signal you've, unless you really screw up the timing on it. Um, through there, but that's what we look at. So that would be, in a perfect world, our maximum flow rate. And yeah, it never runs for an entire hour, but that we... Well, we compare everything on an hourly basis. All right, so that's our flow rate. It's not the actual uh, flow that would come through there. All right, and it's a lot. It's very similar to the capacity we've talked about before in chapter six when we were looking at uh, levels of service and whatnot through there. So our saturation flow rate would be whatever you know, 3,600 seconds is divided by the saturation headway in seconds per vehicle. Right, and then about the best you're going to get is about two seconds per vehicle. That's everybody's moving along, uh, and they're keeping very tight spacing. There's no big gaps in the traffic flow, and obviously, if you work that out, that's about 1,800 vehicles per hour. And we've talked about that before. Now, I, you know, theoretically, 1,900 is the max, and 1,800 is often what we use, and we'll see that in a second here. Looking at like an urban situation where people tend to be going slower to start with, you're not probably going to get two seconds per vehicle. It's going to be longer than that. And it's, it's pretty common that you're a little below that. So two and a half seconds isn't out of the realm. Um, I can think of some locations where it's more of a 20 to 25 mile per hour speed limit and people aren't you know keeping right on it and, and keeping those gaps in between cars super small or is keeping that spacing as tight as they should. Two and a half may be a little more common there. And then at 30 to 40 miles per hour and everyone's keeping a nice tight grouping, yeah, you can get two seconds. You can get even a little bit below that you know, through there. So again, the the theoretical max saturation we use is 1900. A lot of times we'll just pick 1800 because it makes our math a lot easier. Now through there, that's a two second uh, uh, headway. And I see, I think it's a probably a little more common than 1900. Yeah, okay. The 1900 may be a theoretical maximum, but you're rarely going to see that probably in the real world out there. Things that affect that flow rate. Um, how wide the lanes are these are you know, we're going right back to all those level service talks we had before is what effect does lane widths have on our capacities right so a 12 foot lane 11 foot lane 10 foot lane so forth each one is going to affect capacity so if you're anything below a 12 you're going to lose some capacity people are going to slow down a little bit right if you're on a steep hill they're going to slow down if you've got parking along the side people are watching uh, the parked cars and being careful about doors opening uh, and so forth, you're going to lose some capacity. All right, so all these things affect capacity. And just like in level of service, we take the 
it's a uh, that V sub P, right? That theoretical um, passenger cars per hour per lane. So we're converting all of these uh, factors and uh, adjusting so that we would get that ideal flow rate. Right? So the flow rates that we use in the book have already been adjusted, right? You don't have to uh, look at curbside parking or the number of bus stops or number of bicycles. We've already adjusted the flow rates that we give you in the book and we use for examples and in the problems have already been adjusted uh, for us through there. Also, left and right turns at a, a traffic symbol are not going to have the same saturated flow rate. You're not going to use 1800 or 1900 for a left turn lane or a right turn lane. People, you're going to go a fair bit slower to make those turns. Or you should be going a fair bit slower to make those turns. Most people do. Your your flow rate's going to be much uh, lower than that. All right, through there. So you have to adjust for that. Um, and just remember that the through lanes, yeah, they might be 1800 or 1900 vehicles per hour. Uh, theoretically, per lane. Uh, through there, your left and right lanes are never going to be uh, near those numbers. All right, through there. The, the first concept we need to talk about when we're looking at capacity uh, today is lost time. And lost time is when when the light turns green, people don't immediately start moving. And we call that lost time. It takes a while for that first car in in the queue to start moving forward. Right? And by the third or fourth car, usually it's it's reached its steady state as long as they they maintain their gaps now through there and we say usually we lose about the first two seconds that light turns green people are well some people are watching the light but even then it takes a while for their car to speed up some people aren't always paying attention to light immediately and it takes them a while to achieve a uh, to, to get moving and then get up to speed and then once the queue once that whole line of cars is up to speed that's when we hit that 1800 1900 vehicles uh, per hour per lane uh, through there so that's uh, that's what lost time is and this is uh, an example we can see the very first car in the in the queue it may take it you know more twice as long to get past the stop bar right and then each as that queue speeds up kind of like a train moving out of the station the the headway drops this is the distance in between the time in between cars not head time distance it's the time between cars our headways dropping until we finally reach this equilibrium uh, level through here and that's our saturation uh, headway through that and that's what you know in our examples we'll give you it's a two second or two and a half second or three second that's what the uh, that saturation headway is but we lose some of that first startup time uh, at the beginning because it takes a while for that vehicle queue to move and i will say after you know tenth or so car there's usually an accordion effect and everyone else is accelerating moving through there's going to be they're going to get some wider gaps opening up all right through there and that's just natural and you know, some people when they time traffic signals say well once you start getting these this accordion effect and you get these longer gaps starting to open up which is just normal uh, normal it's not because someone's not paying attention it's just not every vehicle accelerates at the same speed right through there that once you start opening up these longer gaps four or five seconds you should turn off that phase you should go yellow and then red and end that phase because it's becoming less efficient because you've you're not maintaining these tight headways even though there's still a line of cars who are all there waiting to start it, it's just normal that that's going to space out once it moves further down the line and and people get started moving um, so they say well you should you know these are the people who believe in short cycle lengths. <laughs> once you once you get that accordion effect, you should start cutting people off and and give the next uh, phase their green time because they'll be all tightly bunched and they'll be more efficient as they move through that. All right here's a, a good example. A friend of mine uh, recorded. Uh, he was working on a project with Purdue. And this is down in Indianapolis, and so if we watch here, that light just turned green, right? And this guy in the left turn lane. Still not moving. Now, this should have been the start of the queue. It's still not moving. Still not moving. And then finally went. <laughs> right, so that's a very egregious uh, lost time incident there. But that gives you the, uh, probably a little more uh, dramatic uh, representation of what lost time looks like, right? The light turned green and someone waits a while before they move, not usually that long uh, through there, but that's, that's a pretty good video to, to show what lost time looks like. That was a lot of lost time in that left through lane uh, through there.
Right. Um, lost time, the other piece of lost time is at the end of that green phase. And so we've got this all red interval. We talked about it last time. And so all the indications all the way around the traffic signal for all directions is red for usually one second to two seconds. I think some places maybe it's two and a half. All right. It depends on the jurisdiction, how much all red time they want. No one's supposed to be moving during that all red phase. And so we call that lost time as well. So we're not, we lost it. We can't use it. We can't use it for movement of vehicles. It's not part of our green time, uh, right, uh, through that. So um, so th during those periods of time, that, that challenge, this clearance intervals, is not effectively used by traffic, right? So the, the change in that clearance, um, the change interval, which is yellow, and then the clearance interval, which is the all red phase, we cars can't effectively use that, or they shouldn't be using it right uh, through there and they'll use some of the yellow they'll still finish moving through on yellow but they won't use all of it right so what we end up saying is that the last second of yellow and all of the all red time is lost time all right so those are our two other uh, pieces of lost time and if you add those together we have the startup lost time and then we've got the end uh, lost time or the clearance interval lost time and so we add those together and that's our total lost time and so that first uh the startup lost time is we usually uh, use the terms two seconds for that, and then the clearance lost time is the last second of yellow. So hopefully people saw the yellow come on. The people who were already moving finish going through, but but people don't want to start going through in that last second. So that last second is also uh, lost time, and then all of the all red is considered lost time. So we add those together, and that's our total lost time. And you can you can see that yellow time and the all red time usually are are, uh, are set values for a given intersection, and they don't change for that intersection. And sometimes during the day you may be running a shorter cycle length. Other times they use a longer cycle length. That lost time is a larger percentage of the short cycle lengths, and it's a smaller percentage of the longer cycle lengths. And so just keep that in mind. That's another reason some people. Um, like to use longer cycling to say, well, it's more efficient because I have, uh, as a proportion of the total cycle, I have less lost time uh, through there. So that's one reason uh, people like the longer cycling. Again, the people who like short cycle lengths say that you're, they, it's what they call like that according effect where you get that spacing in cars, they call that starving. And so you're starving the flow because people can't accelerate fast enough to keep a constant flow going through it. So uh, those are the, the two sides of, of that fight, you know, short, snappy uh, intersection timings or longer timings uh, through that. So for for our analysis purposes, we're going to look at what this what we use is we call effective green time, which is how much green time can you actually use? And the opposite of that is is the effective red time. What's the effective amount of time you can't use and for a certain movement going through? So again, if we looked at southbound through, that's what we're looking at. And so southbound through has a certain amount of effective green time and the opposite or uh, other side of that would be the, the effective red time. And so if you, and we'll talk about how to calculate those here in a, in a bit, the effective green time is the time you can actually use to keep cars moving through. And it may not be a surprise to you that the effective green time is basically um, all the time given to that movement, we call that the split, minus all the lost time through there. And so we use little g for effective green time. Effective green time is equal to the programmed green time, which is capital G, plus the programmed yellow time, capital Y, plus the programmed all red time, which is capital AR, minus what we just talked about, all the lost time. And the lost time is usually the two seconds at the beginning of the green, um, as well as one second of the yellow and all of the all red. And so if you were to if you were to add that up, you know, the short term is it's all red plus three seconds. Whatever your all red time is plus three seconds through there will be your total lost time. So if we add together the split time, which is green plus yellow plus the all red for that movement, so that'd be southbound through or, you know, northbound through or whatever, whatever phase you want. It could be one of the left turns too. You add together all those those three uh, components of its split time and subtract off the lost time, and that'll give you the effective green time. The amount of green time that movement can actually use uh, to move cars through the intersection. Through there. So that's effective green time. If we looked at this example, 
we've got this is a very simple one there's no turn movements there there's turn movements that are allowed but they're not part of the signal timing and so we call this a four phase intersection you're allowed to make you have permissive movements to for left and right turns but you actually just have the green ball indication on the signal heads for all directions and so we call that a four a four phase uh, intersection so two and six are your main road four and eight are your side road uh, through here looks like uh, and this is at an angle right so the two is kind of headed southwest and six is going northeast through there and if we look at it in the timing diagram this would be what it looked like so our phase two and six both get 20 seconds four and eight are both timed for 10 seconds right this is not um, this is a good example uh, it's not how we would normally probably time <laughs> time time an intersection in that split time this is your split time is 20 seconds it includes this would be your green portion the yellow portion and the red portion your phase four split time would be green yellow plus all red would be 10 seconds that's all added together in that time so let's let's split it out and let's, let's look at phase six here and let's look at the phase six through movement and well it is phase six is a through movement and it has permissive left and right turns as well that's all all together it's 20 seconds and that's broken into pieces and so let's look at the pieces the first is the minimum time usually your minimum green is about five seconds and then whatever uh, the rest of your green time you want to be as after in this case it's 12 we'd have a total green time of 17 seconds and that would be the capital g from that last equation all right we've got uh, yellow time programmed in and for two seconds and that's that capital y and then we have all red capital ar you know, from the equation of one second and and yeah you just yellow and this all red and it's not too far out of normal uh, for it. it depends on the speed of the road and how wide the intersection is how long your yellow and your red are and you're all red through there so that's that's the total time adding up to this 20 seconds which is your total split they call for this phase so your phase six split time is 20 seconds it is broken up into green for 17 yellow for two and all red for one through that so what's our lost time well we have two seconds at the beginning we have one of these seconds of the yellow time is lost plus all of the all red which is one more second we'd have a total lost time of four seconds so out of 20 seconds of split for phase six four of those seconds can't be used uh, are not effectively used for cars moving through or are safely used some cars will try to push that yellow and all red but they shouldn't right so we use our equation and we can calculate then that we've got 16 seconds of effective green time all right so we've added up each of those pieces from our split and subtracted off the lost time we have 16 seconds that traffic can effectively move through our intersection right, through there so there's our effective green time 16 seconds right. and the opposite of that of the effective green time is the effective red time and we don't have effective yellow yellow fits into the green uh, piece right or is used partially in the effective uh, green time it's part of the split uh, timing for that phase um, so we just have effective green and effective red you add those together you get your cycle length and so if you've got a 60 second cycle effective green plus effective red have to equal 60 seconds all right, so and effective red is the actually programmed red time for that movement so southbound through let's say and then you add in all the lost time which is means actually subtracted out of the um the i guess you'd say the the phase timing the the time you should be able to go uh for that the green time uh, through there and so you're you subtracted that that lost time off of off of your total split for the the movement and now you add it into the total red for that movement and again that that balances out so that if you added effective green plus effective red you'd equal your cycle length uh, through there all right and that's and, and normally we don't calculate what the total red time is because the way we program traffic signals is we're programming the split time for that and there's no place in there where we actually program and say that you know you must remain red for 40 seconds it's just anytime it's not programmed to be green it's red and so that's so we normally would calculate the effective green time and subtract it from the cycle length and that's how we would get the effective red uh, red time through there okay so and that's this equation so our effective red is the cycle length capital c uh, minus the effective green time and then finally, our, our last piece today, this is kind of a shorter lesson, I guess. Our last piece is what's the capacity. And so what's the capacity, which is little c, and remember cycling is capital C. 
the capacity of a movement. This is just a single lane or a single movement. So southbound through again, our example for today. Our capacity, how many vehicles we can move through that in an hour is equal to the saturation flow rate. Remember, that's how we started this, this uh, lecture, is what's our saturation flow rate. So if we say 1,800 vehicles per hour, if we, that's what we calculated to be our saturation flow rate, if we multiply that saturation flow rate by the ratio of what uh, proportion the that the signal is effectively green for that movement um, out of the entire cycle length, that will give us the capacity. All right, so that's this term over here, effective green over the cycle length. All right, so if we had 17 seconds uh, in that example for phase six, we had 17, or was it 16 seconds? Let's go look. 16 seconds of effective green, sorry. And we have a cycle length of 30 seconds, it's a super short cycle, <clears throat> right? So 16 divided by 30 times whatever our saturation flow rate is, that'll give us the capacity in vehicles per hour of that intersection, or actually not of the intersection, of that single lane in the intersection. All right. So that's, or group of lanes. So again, if we had two lanes going through, our saturation rate wouldn't be 1800, it'd be 3600. We would take 3600 times that proportion of the time out of the cycle that that movement has effective green. Uh, then I would calculate the capacity on that movement if it has multiple lanes uh, through there. And you can do the same thing for left turns and right turns, but remember your saturation flow rate for left and right turns is going to be lower, and you just have to calculate what that is based on how fast people are moving through it. Either measure it in the field, or you can kind of approximate if you know what the radii they would be uh, turning at. Normally you can kind of approximate uh, what that saturation flow rate would be um, for that movement there. Okay, so that's how we get capacity. All right, it's just a ratio of how much effective green time a certain movement has out of the total cycle times the saturation rate. And that'll do it for this time. We'll pick up uh, next time. We'll also be continuing on talking about traffic signals.